Hello, CT Cult. My name is Jensen Sierra Lambert, and I'm a Spanish teacher at Greens Farms Academy in Westport, Connecticut. I'm coming to you from my classroom. Um, this is my classroom in the background, and welcome to the first video of a series on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Today, I am going to go over the concept of windows, mirrors, and sliding doors in the language classroom as a way to provide a more diverse and inclusive experience for our students. So allow me to share um, my screen here so we can get started with the program of windows, mirrors, and sliding doors in the language classroom. Um, let's see. So let's start with a few definitions that I'm going to use throughout this series so that we can understand each other very well. Um, so first, the notion that classroom curriculum should serve as windows and mirrors for students was first coined um, by educator Emily Stiles in 1988, but it wasn't until 1990 that well-known children's literature researcher Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop wrote about windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors as it relates specifically to children's books. With this way of thinking, um, Dr. Bishop states that books should be windows into the realities of others, not just imaginary worlds. And books can be mirrors that reflect the lives of the readers. Sliding glass doors refers to how readers can walk into the, the, a story and become part of the world created by the author. Readers become fully immersed in another experience. So approaching children's stories through the lens of windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors prioritizes diversity, number one. Number two, it honors many cultures. And number three, it promotes empathy. So now we're gonna see how this plays out in the language classroom. Um, so let's do a quick review of what DEI and B um, means and how it plays out in our own classrooms, in the language classroom. Um, so as an educator, um, I've always been curious about the fundamental differences between diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, because they're very specific. Um, and the best way for me to understand the differences is to ask myself questions, right? We teachers love essential questions. So these are the questions that I've written for myself that I use to reflect on my teaching, my lessons, my curriculum. So when I think of diversity, here's what I wonder. Are my lessons providing windows into a variety of cultures? Are there sliding doors in my lessons to allow students to enter those cultures? Um, do my lessons combat the omission of race in my students' identities? Inclusion, do my lessons value the cultural perspective and or experiences of my students? Are my students able to make meaningful connections to instructional content? Belonging. Are my lessons a mirror for all students? Do they see their experiences reflected and valued in my curriculum? All right. So these are the questions we're going to keep in mind as we um, delve into these windows and mirrors and sliding doors. And also um, when I uh, show you some of the examples that I'm going to show you today and in the following videos. So, um, so what does ACTFL have to say about all of this? Well, in 2012, ACTFL put out a statement on DEI charging world language educators with specific tasks regarding inclusive teaching. We have a responsibility. I have a responsibility as a language teacher to incorporate content in my curriculum that celebrates diversity. It exposes our students to a variety of cultural perspectives. Um, and beyond that, we are also responsible for creating a space where students feel safe to express their identities, 
to ask uncomfortable questions and to engage in social discourse. That's our responsibility. Um, I invite you all to look for um, this position statement on diversity and inclusion is on the ACFL website. Um, here I've highlighted uh, things that really stand out to me in terms of ACFL's um, responsibilities um, when it comes down to diversity and inclusion. So I want my classroom to be a place where diversity is appreciated and respected. Um, also, um, the fourth bullet point here, promote awareness and dif differ differentiation of language instruction to accommodate students' diverse learning styles. That's super important for me. Exceptional learning needs, cultural, ethnic, and linguistic backgrounds, and personal interests and goals. And the last one here, um, which I think is the most important as far as this series on DEI is concerned, Encourage the selection and use of instructional materials that integrate multicultural and diverse perspectives throughout the curriculum. Um, so hopefully the examples that I present to you today and in the following videos um, will give you more specifics on this. Um, so let's get started with windows, right? So what are windows again? Windows are opportunities we have in the classroom, right? To expose our students to a variety of experiences, right? To the beauty of the target language, the beauty of the culture behind that target language that we teach. So one specific example of something that I've used numerous times in my classroom at all levels. Here's a painting by the artist, Carmen Lomas Garza. Um, and if you don't, if you've never used her paintings in your classroom, I'm pretty sure that this painting looks familiar to you. Um, and why? Because Carmen Lomas Garza is an American artist. She's a Mexican-American artist born and raised in Texas. Um, and in this particular painting, um, she depicts a scene or a cultural practice of a Mexican-American community. Now, when I first show this painting to my students in the classroom, um, I, I want them to really observe and analyze and come up with questions of their own um, and also express their opinion about what they see. So we do an I see, I think, I wonder activity, right? So initially, my students think that this is a scene from a Spanish-speaking country. Maybe they're in Mexico. Maybe they're in Peru, maybe they're in Ecuador. Um, so at first it's a little shocking for them to hear that this family, in fact, is an American family in Texas, right? So um, they don't have to, um, they don't have to travel to Latin America or to Spain to encounter a, a Spanish speaking community, right? They don't have to travel to France, right? to um, be exposed to a Francophone community, right? Um, we, you know, they realize that this language that they're learning, this culture that they're learning about, right? It's actually all around them in the United States, right? So that's what ACFL is talking about um, when they say expose students, right? To um, a variety of experiences within American society. So, this painting could be used for so many different things, right? So immediately you see a family. So if you're covering a family unit, instead of using a picture that you Google or you download from a website, right? Um, to teach um, family relationships, right? Why not use a painting like this, an authentic resource, an authentic source by a Mexican-American artist, right? Um, where you have a variety of relationships, right? Like you can teach grandparents, you can teach mom, dad, nephew, niece. So it's great for that. Um, they're also all wearing different clothing. So if you're covering clothing vocabulary, this would be perfect for that. They're also all doing different things. So if you are introducing verb conjugations, 
this painting would also be ideal, right? To use different subjects, to use different um, verb endings, a variety of things. They're also cooking, right? We all teach about food um, in our in our classes. So this this is a nice, this is a good opportunity, right? To teach about tamales if you, you know, teach Spanish. Now, mm -hmm. for those of you who teach other languages, um, think about think about paintings in the Francophone world, um, in the um Asian community that could be used, right, in your classrooms to depict and to to talk about cultural practices products that are that are very unique um, to these target uh, languages, to these cultures that we teach in our classrooms. Um, later on, not in this video, but in the video where we talk about um, sliding doors, I'm going to show you how you can use this painting for a variety of speaking activities, writing activities. So it's the gift that keeps on giving, right? Um, another example of a window um, in the classroom. Um, here's an artist uh, by the name of Wifredo Lam, a Cuban, an Afro-Cuban artist um, with a who had a Chinese father, right? And his name is Wifredo Lam. Um, he left Cuba at the age of 20 uh, to study art in Europe and traveled all over Europe, right? And was exposed to a variety of art forms and styles, um, met Pablo Picasso, um, was exposed to surrealism, was exposed to Dadaism, um, a number of artistic styles, right? So in the Spanish classroom, you know, we all love to teach about Picasso and Cubism. And some of us teach Guernica and um, Picasso's Blue Period, for example. Well, here you have an opportunity to talk about an artist who was influenced by Picasso. And when you look at his paintings, you can clearly see the Picasso influence. But in addition to that, right, you see other influences. And then you have an artist with a very diverse mestizo background, um, which also provides a, an opportunity for a um, mirror, which we're not gonna talk about today. I'll explain later on how this can be a mirror for some of your um, students in the classroom. So art, right? In a nutshell, art is a great way to provide windows of culture, right? To expose students to a diverse, um, diverse uh, list of authentic resources um, in the uh, target culture, in the target language. Um, dance. Dance is another, if, well, if you're not into dancing, you know, that's okay. You can just play the music, but every now and then, you know, I like to do a brain break in my classroom. Um, so cumbia, is one of those, um, it's from Colombia, right? It has this catchy rhythm and beat. And so I like to ask my students to get up in the classroom and I teach them a few steps. And the reason I like to talk about cumbia is because there are certain steps in cumbia that come from the African tradition, the African influence in Colombia. And it gives me an opportunity, right, to talk about um, slavery in South America and how um, the slaves contributed to Colombian culture. So that's another example. Um, another, speaking of music, right, I'm a huge fan of Mark Anthony. And um, I wrote these here in English, but, you know, I teach Spanish. So these are these are statements that I would um, have in my classroom in the target language. But um, Mark Anthony um, is an American, right? Um, an American artist, an American singer from the Bronx, who also happens to be bilingual. And it's important for me to expose students to that experience as well, right? Like we're surrounded by people who are part of both worlds. They're not monolinguals, right? And they've they've grown up 
right? Um, exposed to two cultures or three cultures. So Mark Anthony, a bilingual singer, provides an opportunity, right, to talk about um, another type of American experience. Um, now, one thing that sometimes we forget, um, our classrooms are amazing tools, are amazing windows into the target language, into the target culture, right? So a lot of our students, um, those 60 minutes, three times a week or four times a week that they get to spend in our classrooms, that's all the exposure that they get to the language. That's all the exposure that they get to the culture for the majority of my students, right? So here's a picture of my classroom which as you can see, it looks like a piñata exploded in it. There's so much, there's so much color, there's so many colors and so many different things, um, different <laughs> furniture, but you know, the artifacts that I have in this classroom um, have also been great teaching tools for me, right? Because sometimes when, when students get distracted, they start daydreaming. Sometimes, you know, they start staring at the artifacts that I have in my classroom. And that serves as a conversation starter, right? Um, and I try to have artifacts. I think I have an artifact from every single country in the Spanish-speaking world. Many of these things I've acquired um, through my travels or you know, sometimes my students or my family, they travel to Spanish-speaking countries and they bring me things because they know that I, I, I like to have these things in my classroom. And honestly, some of these I've gotten from Etsy. Um, and so don't forget that your classroom can also be an amazing window um, of culture, of knowledge, right, for your students. Now, in our next video, um, I'm going to show you how those windows um, can also serve as mirrors for some of the students that you have sitting in your classroom. Um, so don't forget to tune in, right, for the next uh, uh, episode, which is Windows, and we'll finalize with Sliding Doors. So it's been a pleasure uh, to talk to you about uh, something that's really important to me. Um, please reach out if you have any questions. My um, email will be provided in the newsletter. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Hasta luego. Ciao.